80% of what's deep inside the world's oceans remains hidden to this day. That's because the ocean covers 70% of the planet's surface, and we only have access to a small portion of that. We can clearly see around 3 miles deep down inside the ocean. So it's no surprise that our most recent discoveries when it comes to wildlife come from the ocean. I mean, there's a lot to explore, like this new shark species called the genie's dogfish, or the longest animal ever found, a 154-foot-long jellyfish, which we just stumbled upon earlier this year in Australia. Somewhere in the Arctic and Antarctic seas, a strange phenomenon appears, confusing people to say the least. It's called frost flowers, but they're not plants at all, merely ice crystals. Frost grows on the long stem plants that manage to break the thin layer on the surface of young sea ice. Frost flowers aren't just made of water, though. They have a variety of microorganisms within, making them a small, temporary ecosystem. Turns out we don't have volcanoes just on the visible surface of the Earth. Submarine volcanoes are just as disruptive to their surrounding wildlife. If the data we have so far is correct, the ocean has the most productive volcanic systems on Earth, most of them being on average 8,500 feet below the surface of the water. A maelstrom, a powerful and at times dangerous whirlpool, is a source of nightmares for seafarers to this day. What sets a maelstrom apart from other whirlpools is that it comes in an extraordinary size and force. It's so powerful, it can even put larger ships in a lot of trouble. One of the most famous of them is called Naruto, and it's located near Awaji Island. Its tides move in and out from 8 to 12 miles per hour twice a day, making it one of the fastest in the world. The sinking of the Titanic is the historical event that made icebergs famous, am I right? Well, sometimes these icebergs even come with colored stripes. They can be brown, black, green, yellow, and blue. Obviously, they're called striped icebergs, and they get their colors from various natural reasons. Like the blue ones, for example, which turn up when the ice melts and freezes back up very quickly. If there are green stripes in the iceberg, it probably means it has some algae stuck somewhere in there. Other more earth-toned colors, like brown, yellow, or black, have other things to blame, like sediments the seawater picks up before freezing. Back in March 2019, scientists stumbled upon one of the most baffling phenomena ever to be found in the sea. During the exploration of one of the underwater volcanoes, they noticed what looked like a small lake, which was upside down. It was at least 6,500 feet below sea level. If you think that doesn't make any sense, well, that's because it's not real. Turns out it was nothing more than an optical illusion generated by the liquid in these upside-down pools. It gets up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit hot, and it's made of some harsh chemicals like sulfur and metals, which makes the illusion possible. The world's largest waterfall is also safely tucked underwater. It's located beneath the Denmark Strait, a portion of water that stands between Iceland and Greenland. If you suddenly grow fish gills, dive in there, and manage to comfortably breathe underwater, you'll be able to see a series of waterfalls that begin at 2,000 feet under the surface, but then drop down to a depth of 10,000 feet. In 2011, Swedish treasure hunters discovered an object on the bottom of the Baltic Sea that they described as strange and mysterious. It's oval shape with unusual stair formations. The head of the team who made the discovery supposed it must have been constructed tens of thousands of years ago, even before the Ice Age, and could have been part of the underwater city of Atlantis. Experts who analyze the object believe it to be a regular glacial deposit or some other natural formation, but they still don't know for sure. Now, they don't call it the Black Sea for nothing. Located at the southeastern extremity of Europe, it even has sea smoke which is basically steam coming out of the surface of the water. This happens because of the humidity of the oceanic water, which neutralizes the cooler wind blowing on the water surface, creating this vapor-like phenomenon. If you ever check out the ocean surface during sunset and sunrise, you might get lucky enough to see green flashes. 
You'll have to pay attention, though, because it merely lasts for a couple of seconds. They happen because of the natural prismatic effect of the atmosphere of the Earth. During sunsets and sunrises, light emerging from the sun gets diverged into multiple colors, a process that looks like there's a green flash emitted by the water. Red tides do happen a lot of times, and although there's no need to panic when you see one of those, you still must be careful. The technical term for this phenomenon is algal blooming. It happens when there's a rapid growth or blooming of algae in the waters of the ocean. Because of the chemicals these algae contain, they may be trouble for birds, animals, and even humans. So don't be so quick to jump into the waters should you ever experience it. Octopuses and squid have a special trait that sets them apart from other sea creatures. They have three hearts. While Valentine's Day must be very special for them. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make them more romantic, but they do need these three hearts to function properly. They have one major heart that helps with circulation all around their bodies, and two bronchial hearts that are responsible for pumping near their gills. So, with three hearts and eight arms, when the octopus hugs you, you'll know she's very sincere. Based on a study published in 2013, dolphins have names for each other, particularly bottlenose dolphins, which have their own special whistles, just like human names. Not only do they develop this type of whistle to present themselves to other dolphins, but they can also learn other such names so they can better communicate with each other. In the depths of the Pacific Ocean, there's a mysterious singing whale, which scientists have yet to fully understand. They call it the loneliest whale because it emits sounds at a much higher pitch than any other blue whale we've ever encountered. No one has ever seen it, though, so researchers believe its strange tune may be keeping it from actually finding a partner. Aww. Now, standard blue whales have their own particular quirk. Their hearts are more than 5 feet long. They're also about 4 feet wide and can weigh more than 400 pounds. Just to give you a better idea, your heart is roughly the size of your fist, so that would be smaller. Not that we aren't a bit intimidated by sea creatures already, but just so you know, sharks can sometimes grow thousands of teeth. And not just one or two thousand, up to 30,000 teeth over their lifetime to be precise. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see a shark's dentist bill. <laughs> Something to chew on. Scientists have yet to identify a creature on Earth that can actually live forever, but it looks like this is about to change. A tiny jellyfish that's even smaller than the nail on your pinky appears to be the living embodiment of Benjamin Button. That's because it has the ability to go back to a previous developing stage whenever it's in danger or extremely hungry and out of food. It's no surprise they earn themselves the nickname the Immortal Jellyfish. We've known about this species for hundreds of years, but it took us until the 1990s to discover their unique characteristics. We're yet to be sure how it's able to produce cells that regress and regrow, but they could hold a secret that might help advances in medicine for both animals and humans. If you're smelling something fishy at home and it's not your delicious salmon dinner, then it's time to check your electrical equipment. That stinky smell could mean your wires are frayed, your breakers are faulty, or your circuits are overloaded. And let me tell you, those plastic-coated wires emit a smell worse than a tuna sandwich left out in the sun. So don't be a fish out of water and get your electrical system checked ASAP. If you smell rotten eggs in your house, call the plumber straight away. The most obvious reason is the sewage and drain problems, such as contamination. But such a smell can also be produced if you've got problems with the water heater. Another possible problem might be a gas leak. Manufacturers add some distinct bad-smelling chemical to natural gas so that people could notice even the tiniest gas leak on the spot. This one may not be as easy to spot as a unicorn in Central Park, but it's still important to know. Have you ever caught a whiff of something funky before your stove ignites? That's the smell of carbon monoxide. And let me tell you, it's no joke. This sneaky gas can be extremely dangerous if you inhale too much of it. And the worst part is that it's completely odorless and tasteless. That weird scent you're picking up it's actually added to the gas to give you a heads up that danger is lurking. So, next time you catch a funky smell coming from your stove, don't just brush it off as last night's leftover lasagna. 
It's not uncommon to find mold in your home wherever water is present and trapped, like an unknown leak in the walls. Mold spores can grow as a result of this moist patch and can cause pretty serious health issues. Bed bugs have a thing for shoes. Yep, they love to hide in them, but only if the conditions are right. So if you've got a pair of shoes that you hardly ever wear, watch out. Bed bugs might just be snuggling up in there for a cozy nap. But don't worry, there's a trick to keeping those pesky bugs out of your kicks. Leather shoes are a bit too smooth for bed bugs to crawl on, so they're less likely to hide in those. Athletic shoes, on the other hand, are like a playground for bed bugs. All those interesting textures and patterns make for the perfect hiding spot. So if you want to keep bed bugs out of your shoes, just wear them regularly. Those creepy crawlers don't like anything that moves or gets disturbed often. And who knows, you might even squish a few of them in the process. Talk about a win-win situation. So go ahead, put on those shoes and show those bed bugs who's boss. Your feet and your sanity will thank you for it. If your nostrils are being assaulted by an unpleasant odor, it might be time to check your mattress. Recent scientific studies have revealed that a seven-year-old mattress can harbor more bacteria than a sci-fi movie set in outer space. Over 16 million colony-forming units per square inch. That's enough to make even the bravest of us want to sleep in a hazmat suit. But fear not, for there is a solution to this gross problem. Enter baking soda, the unsung hero of household cleaning. Simply sprinkle some of this magical powder onto your mattress, let it sit for half an hour while you go do something fun like watching cat videos, and then vacuum it up with a brush attachment. Voila! Your bed will smell fresher than a field of daisies on a spring day. So don't let those pesky bacteria get the best of you. And who knows? Maybe your newly freshened mattress will even inspire some sweet dreams, or at least keep the nightmares at bay. Have you ever noticed that your towel smells like a swamp monster's armpit? Yeah, that's because you've been using it for too long. Don't be a bacteria hoarder. Switch out your towel after three uses. And if you really want to banish those stinky germs, toss in some baking soda every now and then. Your nose, and if you share an apartment, your roommates will definitely thank you. If your bathroom smells like a swamp, it could be because of stagnant water or some gross residue in the drain. Don't worry, if the plumber can't come until tomorrow, you can hack the smell by adding a few drops of your favorite essential oil to the toilet paper roll. It won't solve the problem, but at least you won't feel like you're suffocating. Now, on to the stinky toilet brush. Squirt some scented detergent right into the holder, or make your own DIY scent with distilled water and essential oil. It will get rid of bacteria, and the essential oil will hide bad smells. Just make sure you're allergic to the oils you choose. Moving on to the dishwasher. Did you know that mold can grow in there? Gross, right? Run a dry heat cycle with no dishes but some vinegar instead. Make sure to flush all the interiors, including the filters and panels. And if your silverware basket is looking a little moldy, soak it in some diluted antibacterial detergent before rinsing it thoroughly. Now let's talk about weird sounds in your house. Clicking and knocking in the winter or fall could be from turning on the heating or radiators. If there's condensed steam stuck in the system, try bleeding the radiators. And if you hear a bubbling sound, it could be a water leak or sediment in the water heater. Shut off the main water and listen. If the sound stops, call the plumber. If not, try draining the tank. If you're moving into a new house, check the walls and ceiling for any red flags. Fresh paint could be hiding something, so ask the landlord what's up. And stay away from popcorn ceilings. Not only are they ugly, but they contain asbestos. Asbestos is like a bowl of alphabet soup. It's made up of all these hard to pronounce crystal fibers. Chrysotile, anthophyllite, tremolite, crocidolite, actinolite, and amosite. But don't let their wacky names trick you. Asbestos is one tough cookie. It can withstand high temperatures, chemicals, and even electricity. No wonder it was such a popular building material back in the day. Asbestos is like a sneaky ninja. It can break down into teeny tiny fibers that are so small they can float around in the air for days. And if you accidentally breathe in these fibers, it's like inviting a dangerous guest to your lungs. Yikes. So let's give asbestos the boot and keep our lungs happy and healthy. Just be careful if you're renovating an old home. You never know if you'll uncover a surprise layer of asbestos roofing. Odor-causing bacteria love to party in your kitchen sink and drain. And don't even get us started on the garbage disposal scraps. It's like a bacteria buffet in there. 
but there's a fun solution for you. Once a week, throw a party of your own by inviting six ice cubes, one tablespoon of baking soda, three thin lemon slices, and one teaspoon of bleach to the disposal. Turn up the music, ahem, turn on the disposal and let those ice cubes do their thing. When the party's over, rinse with cold water for 30 seconds and voila, a fresh and clean sink. Your new sofa or cabinets could be secretly releasing some stinky gases into the air. Yep, it's true. These gases, called volatile organic compounds, aka VOCs, can make your nose and throat feel pretty irritated. And if that's not bad enough, they can even give you a headache or make you feel dizzy. Yikes! But don't worry, I've got your back. If you can, try opening up some windows to get some fresh air flowing. And if you're on the hunt for some new furniture or home products, keep an eye out for low VOC options. Your nose will thank you. Plus, who wants to be surrounded by stinky furniture anyways? There are sharks that glow in the dark. For example, swell sharks. They live in the dark ocean depths, almost 1,700 feet under the surface. No one knows why exactly, but they emit a fluorescent glow only other swell sharks can see. Scientists detected the glow because they used filters that blocked out yellow light. They think that could be the way for these big fish to communicate with their buddies. This glow helps sharks fight infections on a microbial level. Cowbirds have secret passwords they use to recognize each other. They're a specific type of parasite bird since they lay their eggs in other bird species' nests. The young cowbirds have an inner mechanism where they recognize their species singing, like some sort of secret password only they know. That's how they manage to find others of their kind. A grizzly bear has an incredibly strong bite. It may look cute, but if you're close to this big guy, you better stay out of reach of its sharp claws and especially its mouth. Its bite force is more than 8 million pascals, which means it can crush a bowling ball. Some animals have skin-deep stripes and others have more superficial ones. Tigers are in the first group. Not only is their fur striped, but their skin is as well. It's the same with some other furry big cats, like snow leopards. Giraffes and zebras are in the second group, since they have patterns only on their coats. Speaking of zebras, do you think they're black with white stripes or white with black stripes? At first, it really looks like the second option is correct. Their black stripes mostly end towards the inside of their legs and on their bellies. And the rest of it is white. But that's not true. Surprisingly, they're black with white stripes. All of their fur, both white and black, grows from follicles that have something called melanocyte cells. All animals have these cells. They produce a pigment called melanin, and it gives color to their hair and skin. When it comes to zebras, chemical messengers tell which melanocytes send pigment to which area of fur. That's why zebras have a black and white pattern. But white is not actually its own pigment. It's an absence of melanin. So, black is their default color. Koalas have fingerprints that are so close to ours that they could even taint crime scenes. It doesn't seem like they have a lot in common with humans, but take a closer look at their hands. They have distinctive loops and arches. So if any koalas want to do something illegal, it would be a good idea for them to wear gloves. Ghost crabs growl when they're around creatures they don't like or find threatening. They do it using teeth in their stomachs. First, they'll let you know they'll defend themselves if you try anything by showing you their claws. If that doesn't work, they'll go for fearsome growling noises like dogs. But the noise is coming from rubbing their three elongated hard teeth inside their stomach. Ghost crabs produce the same noise when they're grinding up food. Speaking of teeth, did you know narwhal tusks are actually some sort of an inside-out tooth? Unlike the majority of other whales, narwhals are the ones that come with a large tusk or tooth that grows from the inside of their jaw. It has up to 10 million nerve endings and they're unprotected, which means its tusk is very sensitive to any type of contact. It's almost like a piece of skin because tusks usually don't have many nerve endings. Up to 95% of humans are right-handed and it's the same with bottlenose dolphins. There are even more right-handed ones among them than among humans. During one study, scientists found that bottlenose dolphins turn to their left side over 99% of the time, which means they're right-handed.
They place their right side and right eye closer to the ocean floor as they go for prey, such as squids, shrimps, or smaller fish. More cool facts from the ocean. Did you know humpback whales use bubbles when they go after their prey? You might think they don't need any special method considering how large they are, but when they're lurking for prey in the open waters, these whales team up and use something called a bubble net technique. While swimming in an upward spiral, they blow bubbles underwater. These bubbles make it difficult for fish to escape. The oldest evidence we have of domesticated cats dates up to 12,000 years ago. Researchers discovered this almost 20 years ago when they were digging through an ancient village in Cyprus. They found cat bones right next to human ones, which suggested they were close even when their lives came to an end. Humans were hunters, so they domesticated dogs first, somewhere up to 29,000 years ago. Dogs helped them catch other animals, but they didn't think they needed cats until they started to settle down and store surplus crops. Mice became frequent guests in grain stores, so cats came in handy in those times. Puffins are quite innovative when they want to scratch their bodies. They can surely be proud of their stunning beaks, but they obviously think it's not enough for scratching. Researchers noticed they tend to spontaneously take a small wooden stick to scratch an itchy spot. There's a special type of ant that only lives in a small part of Manhattan. The Broadway medians at the 63rd and 76th Street is the area these crawling critters decided was the best spot for them. The Manhattan looks like it's from Europe, but no European species can actually match it. Hey Potterheads, can you believe there's a thing like chocolate frog? Well, not quite, but it looks like it. New Guinea and Australia weren't always separated. They spent millions of years together until about 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels divided them. Since they were together for so long, some animals and plants still inhabit both areas, including green tree frogs. These frogs have spread really far and wide, and some of them, who live in hot, swampy regions surrounded by plenty of crocodiles, actually look like they're made of chocolate. We all know flamingos for their specific color, but they're not actually pink. They're born gray, and that's how they would stay if it weren't for their diet of blue-green algae and shrimp. These foods have a specific natural dye, which is why flamingo feathers turn pink over time. These little Tasmanian devils grow up and leave their moms. They socialize together, forming bonds that last for the rest of their lives. Not only them, cows also have stronger social ties than we think. They like to socialize, and they make long-lasting friendships. One research even discovered their heart rates significantly increase as a sign of stress when they're separated from their BFFs. Imagine you could simply freeze yourself solid during the cold winter days instead of listening to your teeth chatter and trying to tighten your jacket. That's what frogs can do. Aquatic frogs mostly hibernate underwater and spend most of the winter at the bottom of a pond, lake, or some other body of water. Toads and frogs are generally cold-blooded, which means the temperature of their body takes on the temperature of their surroundings. So, frogs can freeze during the winter because of a high concentration of sugar or glucose in their vital organs. Once they unfreeze, they continue as if nothing happened. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. They can move at speeds of 25 miles per hour, and they spray ink that not only blurs the predator's visual field, but actually harms them. Also, they have nine brains, the central one and eight smaller brains located in their arms. That's why their arms can open a shellfish while the central brain is busy doing something else. An octopus even tastes with its arms. They have cells in their suckers that enable the arms to touch and taste in a way that they detect chemicals marine creatures produce. That way, an octopus can distinguish prey from rocks. How long do you think ice cream has been saving humanity on hot summer days? For many centuries. No one knows for sure the story of how ice cream was discovered, but it likely dates back to at least as far as the 4th century BCE. Of course, it wasn't the ice cream we know today. Alexander the Great, the king of Macedonia, would enjoy snow and ice covered in honey and nectar. That's the early ice cream. 
the Roman Emperor Nero Caesar was eating snow flavored with fruits and juices. How would those guys get snow if they lived in very warm climates? Well, their helpers would run up a nearby mountain to bring some from up there. I'm not sure how they were dealing with it without a refrigerator, but I guess they had ways. Some historians say that there were deep pits covered with straw and the snow was stored there after harvesting it from the mountains. How it didn't melt on the way to the pit remains a mystery to me, but history has many of those. Okay, so far it's just been ice and snow, but we all know it's not the ice cream we're used to. One of the main ingredients of the dessert we know today is milk, and this one most likely appeared in China around the 7th century CE. Back then, the Tang Dynasty was ruling the country, and the emperors probably were the first ones to eat ice cream that contains milk. Back then, it was made from buffalo, goat, or cow milk. To enhance the flavor and aroma, they were adding camphor to it. Then, metal tubes would be filled with the mixture and stored in an ice pool to freeze. Let's leave China for a little bit and move to the Arab world during medieval times. Time to observe what frosty treats they ate there. They used to drink icy refreshments, the earlier versions of sorbet. There, they were typically made of pomegranate, cherry, or quince. Soon after, the Europeans picked it up, and it became quite popular in Europe too. The Italians and the French are the ones who especially adored it, so they took it from there and perfected it into their own versions. In the 17th century, Antonio Latini became the first person to officially record a recipe for his sorbetto. It contained fruits, ice, but also sugar and milk. This is the recipe that most culinary historians consider to be the first official ice cream. The Italians perfected their own type of sorbet called gelato. In Italian, it means frozen. No one is sure about who exactly invented gelato, but everyone knows the guy who opened the first cafe in Paris and started selling it. An Italian guy from Sicilia opened his Il Precope in 1686, and the cafe became a favorite meeting place for famous intellectuals at that time. That's how the French were first introduced to the Italian gelato, which was sold in porcelain bowls resembling egg cups. But you have to remember one important thing. Never call gelato ice cream, especially in front of Italians. Even though these two might seem similar, there are many significant differences. Gelato contains way less fat, less air, and the flavor is more intense, and it's also served warmer than ice cream. So that's the Italian way. The French have perfected their own frozen dessert, the fromage. This translates from French as cheese, but in fact, it has nothing to do with it. Originally, it was made of cream, sugar, and orange flower water. Even today, the cream is an important ingredient, so the fromage is creamier and heavier than a gelato. Also, did you know that eggs are used to produce both? Yes, it's an important gelato and fromage ingredient that gives the dessert the necessary fat, but also a specific flavor. We haven't covered America yet. Most likely, ice cream was brought to the USA by European immigrants. The first ice cream parlor in the States opened in 1790 in New York. But until the beginning of the next century, it was only available to the elite. Once it became more common, of course, it took over the country. It couldn't be any other way, could it? When NASA astronauts were asked what they missed most, ice cream was at the top of the list. Today, 9% of all produced cow milk in the USA is used to produce ice cream. The people who love ice cream most in the world live in New Zealand. The country is the biggest per capita ice cream consumer in the world. The second one is the United States. What do you think the most popular ice cream flavor is? Yeah, that's vanilla, of course. The second most popular flavor is chocolate. Turns out, chocolate ice cream was invented earlier. That's because vanilla wasn't available for a long time. Today, most vanilla is imported from Indonesia and Madagascar. Over 1,000 ice cream flavors exist. There are quite a few really weird ones, like hot dog flavor, bacon, avocado, licorice, octopus, jellyfish flavor, and even roasted garlic. Then there's also cheese ice cream, and it's a real and very common thing in the Philippines. 
The Philippines only got ice cream in the 19th century, but it wasn't widely available until a whole century after that. After refrigeration became widespread, an American opened the first ice cream parlor in the country, serving ice cream of three flavors, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Soon after, many more people started producing the frozen treat, incorporating locally available products like mango, avocado, and coconut. Instead of cow milk, Filipinos traditionally use milk from domestic water buffalo, which is also used to make white cheese. In the second half of the 20th century, cheddar cheese was first imported to the Philippines, and it became an instant favorite. It's the ingredient of the famous Filipino spaghetti and a common topping for pastries. Without thinking long, they combined their favorite cheese with their favorite dessert, ice cream, and they got an amazing creamy, salty, sweet cheese ice cream. So yes, that's a long story. We mentioned ice drinks, sorbet, and ice cream. But there was no word about popsicles. That's right, popsicles didn't exist for a long time. In fact, they were only invented by accident in 1905 by an 11-year-old boy called Frank Epperson. On a cold night, he was mixing sugary soda powder with water and forgot it outside after. After sitting there all night, it got frozen. When the boy returned and found it, he had to lick it off the wooden stick he was stirring it with. He liked it so much that he started producing them. He called them Epsicles, honoring his own name. But later, the name evolved into a Popsicle. Ice cream cones were invented just a year before popsicles in 1904. So, a guy was selling waffle-like pastries at a fair. Right next to him, there was another guy selling ice cream. At some point, the ice cream guy ran out of dishes and didn't know what to do. So, his neighbor rolled his waffle and offered to sell ice cream in them. The history of ice cream isn't even finished yet. Frozen treats keep being invented even today. For example, Slurpees were only invented in the late 1950s. Omar Knedlik was working at Dairy Queen in Kansas City, and the soda fountain broke down. To keep the beverages cool, he put them in the freezer. They turned slushy, and that's how the guy got the idea to make a machine that makes frozen beverages. He even created the icy name and designed a logo for the brand. Several years later, 7-Eleven bought the right to sell the drinks, and they got popular. The newest ice cream-like invention is dip in dots. In 1988, a microbiologist wanted an easier way to feed cows, so he started to freeze cow feed. Then he thought a little bit more and figured out that you can freeze other food, not only cow feed. So he started to freeze ice cream, and it was a blast. That's it for today. Maybe you can come up with something too and will forever be imprinted in the ice cream history like all these heroes we mentioned today. Did you know that chickens can jump and fly too? Domestication of the chicken dates back to at least 2000 BCE. They do have the required feathers and muscles to fly, but they don't do it much anymore hundreds of years after they were domesticated. But if you give them the right motivation, they can do that. If they think the other side of the fence is cool, they can jump up to six feet. Some hens hop on the trees to roost. Picture a tree with a couple of chickens on it. Looks so funny. Their motivation is safety. The tree serves as a cover for them in the daytime and protects them from winged predators. Similarly, at night, the tree turns into a shelter from wind and rain and the possible attacks from ground predators. This doesn't have to be in the wild. Farms where chickens can wander around freely also have tree nests. Some sneaky chickens leave their coop and jump onto the trees. So, many chicken owners search for ways to keep them under control. Hey Siri, search for how to deal with jumping chickens. I'm now moving on to everyday items and the secrets they help. The twist ties and plastic bags on bread packs don't have random colors. They are color-coded based on the daily bread baked each day of the week has an assigned color. For example, blue twist tie stands for Monday, green for Tuesday, and red for Thursday. Now you can figure out how fresh your bread is. Color codes are helpful for employees too. They can easily spot the old loaves on the shelves. There's a popular saying, you are what you eat. It turns out that our guts are also there to make us happy. Serotonin is the feel-good hormone. It's also a neurotransmitter. Many of us immediately associate it with our brains, 
Yet, interestingly, around 95% of the body's serotonin is produced in our digestive tract. Many of us often use the words herbs and spices interchangeably, but these are different seasonings. Spices come from every part of a plant or tree, like root, seed, or bark. But herbs are the plant's leaves. We generally add spice to food in roasting and during cooking. Herbs release their aroma faster, so we add them at the very end. Do you ever feel you've been watched and discovered that you're right? Well, that spider sense-like feeling is called gaze detection. Your brain senses when someone is staring at you. Research explains this as a sort of defense mechanism. A direct gaze can be a symbol of dominance, and that can be a potential threat. Humans evolved with this feeling in time. Strangely, it works when the person looks right at you. If their gaze is off just a few degrees to the left or right of you, your brain won't react this way. What about the urge to re-watch your favorite movies or listen to your songs over and over? You're not alone. This habit has some benefits for your mental health. This behavior eases your mind. When people feel overwhelmed, they'll have less self-control and be less motivated to complete hard tasks. You are drawn into The Office's first season again because when you watch, listen, or do something familiar, you don't have to spend the effort to monitor what you're thinking. So, it's a good way to have a quick mental reset. Here's another feeling. Imagine you're enjoying the sunset on a terrace or at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Out of nowhere, your inner voice whispers, what if I jump? This isn't coming from a darker state. You know, it's just sort of a feeling that appears when you're high up. There is a name for this. The call of the void or the high place phenomenon is a relatively new research topic, but more studies are on the way. Jim Carrey's great performance in The Truman Show is surely remembered. Did you know that The Truman Show delusion is an actual thing? The phenomenon is an issue related to cognitive neuropsychiatry. People with this delusion believe that they're being filmed and that the footage will be broadcasted for entertainment. There was a time when aluminum was more precious than gold. I know, it's hard to believe. We now wrap our sandwiches on this everyday item. If we go back to the 19th century, we would see aluminum as a hard-to-get element because it was literally hard to obtain until innovators found a way to extract it on large industrial scales. Then, the reign of aluminum was over. There are stories about the French ruler Napoleon III having an aluminum cutlery set that he served food to his special guests. We might as well talk about a time traveler's party held in 2009. The theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking invited time travelers to hang out. There was a huge banner hung up with the words, Welcome, time travelers. No one showed up. But maybe travelers had prior engagements, and that's why they didn't attend the party. I swear I'm not crying because no one showed up to that awesome party. I was just cutting an onion. Why do we burst into tears when we chop onions? Because of a particular enzyme. Is there a solution? Next time, get some damp paper towel and put it on the cutting board next to the onion. The acidity that comes from the enzyme will go towards the wet paper instead of your eyes. The ancient Egyptian civil calendar was quite similar to the one we use now. They had 365 days divided into 12 months. But instead of spreading a 31st to some months, they would add those extra days to the end of the year. Now, let's turn our cameras to the animal kingdom again. Is there a benefit for zebras to have their fascinating pattern? Scientists asked this question too and experimented. They dressed up horses with zebra look-alike coats. The coat was covering the whole body of the horses but their heads. It turns out that zebra patterns repel flies. Scientists observed that flies only go for the heads of the animals and stay away from the horse bodies. Ants are known as hard-working animals, even in the tails. That's got a legit reflection in real life. They can carry up to 20 times more weight than their own body weight. These insects have other noble qualities too. If an ant gets seriously injured, it'll refuse treatment from the colony's paramedic ant. The ant knows that it can't make it, so instead of wasting the colony's resources, this ant forces the paramedic ant to carry on without it. Camels can survive around 15 days without drinking water. 
Many people assume that they store water in their humps. No, nope. humps are for food storage in the form of fat. The water is kept in their bloodstream. Speaking of camels, in some countries, there's a tradition to hold camel beauty contests. For instance, a contest was held in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar as an attraction. You see a giant housefly in the house, but it flees from your ninja's hands. You might think that nature will take care of it in a couple of days, but actually, houseflies can live for about a month or two. The next fact is about an emergency on the road. Detachable car headrests can be used as an escape tool. You can break the window with the headrests if you can't leave the car by the doors. You should wedge the headrest between the glass and the windowsill. Aim a corner. Then, you hit the headrest as hard as you can to break the glass safely. You might have to hit a couple of times, but it eventually shatters. Don't give up after one try. Don't be shy. Share your wow facts with us.